All right guys, we got a jam-packed show for you today. We're gonna to be looking at some highly specialized pieces of equipment. Monster trash compactors, loaders with $8,000 solid tires, excavators that are designed to handle waste and trash. And specifically, we're also going to be looking at how this whole entire industry of waste management has changed over the last two decades. So without wasting any more time, let's get into today's video. Guys, this is Martin. Good. He's a director of Key, key accounts, accounts, yes, for Volvo. And so, as Volvo, been basically kind of a key player in the yeah, waste we've been industry? sort of uh, setting the tone and been a key player in the waste industry for like 20 years. So now, what I know of Volvo, they've got like specialized equipment for certain applications. I know you guys are big in the asphalt industry, dirt work, you guys, the excavators, payloaders, boom, we top do the of same, the absolute top of the we line. We do the same thing here. Do you feel sense. like you guys are kind of ahead of the game when yeah, it comes to so. waste? Absolutely. Yeah, we should be very proud of the offering that we have in waste. We have a purpose-built offering that we really have listened to the industry on what their pain points are, and we have addressed that in our equipment. Now we're gonna go check out some of these individual machines really in detail, so let's, let's do that now. Let's meet the next guy. Thank you. All right, Todd. How you doing? Todd is a product manager specialist. I'm product manager for special applications and okay. also attachments for Volvo North America. So this is a special application machine. Okay. So let's take a look at this thing. This is a beast, absolutely a beast. So tell me a little bit about this thing. About 90,000 pounds, obviously a purpose-built landfill compactor. The compactor wheels, right? So those, those are what do all the work. These ones have Terra twist torque. Uh, cleats on them as the trash comes here it comes in twists and breaks it apart and helps to, to break down the, the material and helps to come back so as i look at this machine i want to drive it really bad <laughs> <laughs> i really want to get in this thing oh my god i think i know what i want to do anyway how does this machine then differ from a regular payloader besides these compactor tires and this plate it's, on the front? it's really totally different the purpose is to do compaction and then also distribute the material but it's significantly heavier underneath the bottom side on front frame rear frame there's thick guarding belly pans two inch thick piece of, of steel there to help protect the center pin from wearing over time there's pans up underneath thick pans up underneath that help to pr protect against anything puncturing from below they also swing down for service to service the transmission and the, the fuel tank the death tank on this side you can see the the air intake for the engine is up high keep it out of the debris as high as possible to keep it in as clean clean air as possible okay so one of the things that i you know in this application it's dusty it's dirty it's nasty Nasty. Yep. How do you guys handle that for the radiator? Because I know I've been in them before where the radiator plugs up pretty fast. For sure, yeah. It has an automatic reversing fan. The coolers swing out so that you can easily clean them if you do need to clean them. This is the heavy duty guard here to protect anything from the rear. Little things I've noticed. Your flush mount, your pin, your pull pin right here is yep. not sticking out the back because I've seen so many times where it's mounted out the back and then somebody backs into something and now it's bent and twisted. It's also captured, so it can't come out, so you can't lose it. What? So if you, if you lift that up, how do you get that out? You never get that you out? You never get that out. You can't lose what it. If, what if you like bust that thing and you got to get a new one in? I don't think you'll bust that thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, t anybody ever bust one, you call Todd. <laughs> at 8675309. <laughs> I want to go up into the cab. I got to check out the cab. I'll take you guys with me right here. All right, we're going to go in the cab. Push the button there. The door opens up for you. Very cool. If, if for some reason the battery dies or something like that in, in this system, you can still, you still got the manual still door. Got the manual door open. All right. Yep. All right. Can you turn this bright, shining light off and but I can't, it's making me blind. Where are you, Todd? I can't see you. Todd, where'd you go? So that light's on whenever the battery disconnect is on. And that's on purpose. Wait a minute, what? So that light stays on as long as the machine has power. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So when you shut the battery, disconnect, shut the battery off, disconnect off, that, that shuts off. That shuts off. That way, that way it helps to resist dead batteries. And, you know, uh -huh. I could spend days in this thing. So what should we be looking at, Todd? You got that 
the steering here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you can still you can steer here. You can steer here or, or steer, steer here. right here. Here's your joystick right here. Yeah, that's, this your, is, that's your blade control right there. That's blade control? Down, is, is blade no, control. this is no, this has got to be your steering here and this is because this doesn't go forward and back. This only goes side to side. So I'm guessing this is up and down for your blade. Oh, th this is your your steering right here. You lay your hand right in like this and you just kind of twist your wrist. So the most the most comfortable position of your of your wrist is is this position. So that's oh, how, how you, do you steer. go forward and back. We're right here. F and I, F forward, neutral, reverse, right there. Oh my gosh. The reason that's important is like when I'm plowing snow and I'm going like this, my literally my shoulder, I fried this shoulder out like done, where it's just like, uh, like 24 hours of cranking on a on a sure. wheel like this and then yep. going like this and you're going back and you're always doing that. All right, I can actually see the practical application of this as you're steering. Visibility in here is great to the blade. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, without a doubt. If I got my way, I'm gonna be running one of these. I'm trying to get in on one. Yeah, the striker bars help to clean the material that's coming up around the wheels that might get stuck to oh, it. Oh, right here. That's right. So it helps to shed that material. So as the wheel is coming up, it's grabbing all the excess garbage it, and pushing it down. As it's it coming down. up, it'll help to clean that off. The greasing points are, are all right here, all coupled together. Oh, you got a bank? So uh, that, a bank of them? Right here. That's right. That's so right. look at how you got them tucked away in there real nice. The steering cylinders are nice and high to keep them out of the, out of the garbage. Up, a, up top? Yep. And then everything's closed off as much as possible to stop anything from coming. All of our cabs there, you know, you've got room. You're not in some tight seat there. No, no. The seat's comfortable. You're bouncing up and down. Okay, so, guys, this is John, good friend of mine. We've been working together for years at Volvo. Like, when I go and I jump bounce around in a skid loader all day long, yeah. it, I hate it because it feels like you are just getting killed. You need to stop. You need to rest yeah. much more than normal. Your performance is impacted. Yeah. Right. So, that is a key part of our development of our machines is to say okay the operator environment needs to be set up correctly we want to make sure that this is built to enclose them for safety for comfort for visibility all these factors operator comfort actually does it does play a big role in it i want to go check out the next loader though good let's Thanks. go meet up with chris and go check out the next one continue to talk about the 120 and the features that we've always had in it, but also talk about how this machine has been specced out for the industry. On this L120, this is your typical loader with specialized components. Right. This is one of them. Right. So this, this grapple bucket is designed for garbage? It, it can be. It's a four and a quarter yard bucket um, payload wise, but then when you add the grapple, you can push out to almost seven yards because yeah. obviously the grapple grabs and uh, yeah. you can fit more okay. material. Okay. Um, we do have some of our own. Um, we just decided to use Pemberton this time, but we have our own waste buckets as well. So then the linkage stays the same as your L1, your, your typical dirt configuration, am I right? Um, yes, but we do, we do with, with waste, we, we do a, what we call a long boom. So basically the boom's a little bit longer. Why long boom for waste? Um, reach, basically it keeps the machine a little bit further away. What work would this machine do in a dump pit? So think of when you have the garbage trucks going around picking up yeah. residential stuff. Um, they'll come back to a transfer station, they dump out at the transfer station and we have our machines basically shove, shoving the material into larger trucks to ship somewhere or train cars. The long boom also additionally can stack better because you can, you can ramp up material higher if you have to store material for, you know, okay. while it's waiting to get loaded out somewhere else. And then that brings us to this component which is mandatory. Pretty much, you can imagine what, you, what, what we throw away, even, and then you take into account maybe construction and demolition debris that finds its way in, into the trash and stuff like that. You can figure air, air tires, they're you not gonna make you it. You can't, like, so if we look right behind you, right here, look at this. <clears throat> These are the tires that I run on my trucks, so when I go into the dump, I, it's mandatory. As soon as you get out of the dump, you don't go down the road without going through your tire and pulling nails out and praying. 
Right, right. I mean, that is what happens because you, you fill them up with nails, debris, glass. I mean, it's just terrible. How much does a tire like that cost? Tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, this is probably an $8,000 tire right here. But you, you think of the wear characteristics, they actually add weight to the machine, so yeah. we don't have to add extra counterweight then. The tires kind of do that work for us. They're so heavy. Yeah, They're I mean, it's so not like heavy. you can put a jack under and, and change that tire. It's oh, almost a two-man job. This is, this is a whole different animal. That's, that's a service truck with a crane moving this thing around. That's a beast. Much. A um, couple other things, our cylinders, our boom cylinders, our, our tube guards, everything, everything's guarded, right? So we were try well, the name of the game here is trying to protect against any kind of debris accumulation. Um, and we're, we're trying to shield the vital components from th that stuff getting in there. Shorter headlight brackets, guarded. That way you don't have your headlight, normally our headlights sit way out here almost in line with the fenders. So okay. we shorten this up so it's not as much of a, a risk of, of getting knocked. Underneath the cab, we guard underneath the cab so we have protection for our steering valve and our brake valve. Oh, right here. Yep. Underneath the machine, the whole underside of the front and rear frame totally guarded with belly pants. Now, do you have a fire suppression system? On absolutely, the absolutely on the back. So, 16 nozzles inside the engine compartment and also on the fuse panel. So, 16? 16 different nozzles around. You can see some of them here. Wet chemical, too. Uh, if, if you've ever had a fire extinguisher and you sprayed your machine with like a, a dry system or a dry, like a halon, what happens is if you don't get that cleaned out really well, it'll start attacking your electrical system. Basically the wet chem, it's real easy to wash off after you're done and you don't have that residue in there just working its way into your wiring. Deteriorating. And, exactly, it's very, it's kind of corrosive. I wonder if guys even know that. It's yeah. important to know that as well. Slide out radiator. Yep, standard on all of our L60 all the way up to 120. Anything in the cab that's unique to the waste management industry? As far as in the cab, I would say the main thing is that the power pre-cleaner for your for the, the cab filtration is really, really important. You said powered? It's powered, so there's actually a, a motor in there that actually turns to really, really pressurize and pull air. Oh, okay. So, so it's just not depending on the fan motor. Right. What that basically means, you guys, is that it'll start spinning, right? Separate Centrifugal. The heavy stuff out before it even gets into the filter. Oh, oh, that is so cool. Centrifugal air cleaner. Yep. Oh, now what am I looking at right here? It looks like a 1960s atomic bomb. <laughs> so that's our engine after treatment system. Uh, oh, so that's, that's your where, DEF. Yeah, that's, that's where our DEF goes in. We also have our, our diesel particulate filter there as well. One really cool thing about it is if you see there's a little strut here, right there, when you, when you do have to do upper level service on the machine, like higher hours, 5,000 hours, and do valve adjustments on the engine, stuff like that, oh, that whole system that. just folds right up out of there. So you can just oh, get right wow. out of the way. That and is so that cool. Supports it. So it's real, again, really focused on service. All right. Anything else we need to know? Um, yeah, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about. Just another component of, of you know, these, these machines getting smarter and smarter now. This is called the Copilot. The, the program's called Load Assist. It's a way to, to weigh the material we're moving. Uh, we can also manage customers, manage it from customers, trucking, and materials. So it, it allows the customer to really focus in on, on what the machine's doing. We can put a SIM card or tether with like a hotspot, and we can send the data right to our cloud, and then the customer can view it all remotely. Oh, so somebody in Nebraska can watch what they're doing in Iowa. Yeah. Okay, yep. very cool. Yeah. Load assist, Volvo Copilot. Thanks, man. Always Thanks, a pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. When are we going to get you guys back to Shippensburg? Uh, you're not. You're going to get me into a waste site, and I'm going to be running awesome. this thing for awesome days. It's gonna That's going to be cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, have fun with that, man. That's going to be so cool. I'll be looking uh, forward to seeing it. Let's go check out the excavators next. What is this one? The EC 350. EC 350E. Yep. Okay. How does now? So this one is set up for the waste management industry as well, right? This has the waste package. So uh, what is the waste package? Waste package includes a little different cap, uh, single pane windshield. Includes a different uh, air cleaner, the single cab pane, air filter. Single pane windshield. So normally the windshields on excavators have like the two piece windshield. You lift it up out of the way. Oh yeah, yeah. And the bottom piece lifts out. But for this, for safety reasons, we have a one piece windshield that just stays bolted in. 
because oh, you we can't put, lift it up and no, out. We put a mesh over it anyway, so it's all protected. Fire suppression. It's got the fire suppression. Yeah. Yep. A lot of different guarding on these machines. So the reason guarding is so important is because when you're out working on the mounds of trash, one of my operators almost got hurt because we were demoing a house, which is very similar to what they do. Yeah. And just a piece of uh, just a wood just came shooting straight up, and they literally just landed right between his legs. And it's like went right through the right through the front door. It went right through. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it is. Scary. It's waste industry and recycling, and some of those applications are definitely one of the most grueling and toughest applications. Of course, we have different uh, screens. You can see a screen up there over the engine compartment. That's not a normal option. That's something for waste. So you oh, see so that little right mesh there. up there. Yeah. One of the biggest things you'll see is just the heavy duty. If, if you, and we're up close to it, you can see the material, the metal. Mm -hmm. We offer lifetime frame warranties on the machines because of that. So upper, lower frame, lifetime warranty, boom, and arm lifetime warranty for a first owner. Wow, that's huge. It couldn't, yeah, it's pretty much a lifetime. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of confidence in your equipment because uh, my excavator, I snapped the boom arm. And as you can see with the boom and arms, you see the welding, it's all robotically welding at the factory. So you can see the reinforcements inside there, there's gusseting. When Rob's talking about the gusseting, you can see it there. You can see it offset underneath. Right there. You can see it there, there. So they've actually got plates welded internally. They run from side to side to strengthen that up. Your extra stress, you see that hinge point right there. That's all cast. So that's going to be your. You also got cast right here at the uh, at the end where the knuckle comes in. How about the cab? Let's take a look at the cab. Yep. You see this right here is uh, an external activation for the automatic fire extinguisher if you need be. Okay. So, so it's automatic, but if the, but say something happens, it doesn't go off, and the guy needs to activate it, he just slaps that button. Does he also have access to the inside? Yes. Yep. So your fire suppression system is here. Hood. You've also got fops angle too so when you look left to right it sort of you look straight. you can see better yeah. oh mm -hmm. uh, multi-adjustable see the reason I'm doing this guy is not because I'm having fun because I am actually having fun <laughs> but when we actually want to demonstrate how it isolates the operator from the environment if you want to have an operator come out of a piece of equipment at the end of the day and not feel like he's been working all day long in a piece of heavy equipment off-road you got to have a seat like this this is what isolates the operator from the piece of equipment and keeps them working longer. What else are we looking at? Heavy duty belly plating for especially in these environments. And you can see all of our bolts, and you don't see this on other machines, but all of our bolts are protected. This is something simple, but because we're protecting bolts from getting knocked off. As this machine would spin inside, these things get knocked off and wore down. So we protect all the bolts. Then in the center of the machine, we have a plate that's standard as well that covers up, way up underneath there. This is standard, this is heavy duty for the waste industry. A lot of the other guys don't have that. They're open? Of course, all your hydro yep, they're open. And all your hydraulic lines for your travel motors go through there. So if you get a piece of metal or a piece of right. wood that gets jammed up inside there, which you will in a landfill application, for sure, you're gonna, you're gonna knock those, uh, those lines off. Even your doors of the Volvo, you see the heavy, heavy duty door feeler. That's not flimsy at all, right? Right. And we got things like these bolt-ons instead of, instead of uh, riveted on. Yeah. Just extra thought built in. That so this, allow, I mean, I can't see. rivet. That makes a big difference, Rob. Yeah, I mean, when it boils down to it, this is riveted on. It's a pain in the butt. It's bolted on, and sooner or later, every door gets hit, right? All right, guys, we got Curtis, right? Yes. What do you do for Matt? I'm the refuse product manager, or as I like to say, the garbage truck guy. Okay, so check this truck out, you guys. You guys unveiled this at the show, right? Yes. Yeah. Fully electric, if I'm understanding Absolutely this right? fully electric. There's no diesel engine here, not, no natural gas engine. It is fully battery electric. Have you done any studies where you can compare and contrast the, uh, the operating cost of this one compared to a typical diesel truck? Yes, yeah, oh, it, yes board? we have. It, it, Are we comparable as as, or no right, or what? As far as operating the vehicle going, going down the road, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost less money per mile. So this is available for sale? Not, not quite yet. This is our first uh, our, our first uh, prototype, which is going into the city of New York. So the reason we're at Mac, uh, given a little teaser about this pure electric truck is because Mac is part of the Volvo group. Yes. Mac gets to keep its unique character, its unique flavor that built Mac, but then they get the bonus engineering that you know created the Volvo Empire because I mean Volvo is quality, plain and mm -hmm. simple. So you got this kind of beautiful marriage of both. So keep your eyes open guys, you will be seeing more electric vehicles. Probably in the next 10 years, they're going to be taking over well, both the small industry and the heavy industry. I mean, if I'm I had a crystal ball, you know, I will see what we're going to see what I happens. Think the writing's on the wall. Yeah, I honestly well. do. Curtis, thank you, man. Appreciate thank it. You.